Whenever a bunch of us extra credits folk are all in Seattle at the same time, we like to get together at a place called Puzzle Break for a ridiculous, awesome team gaming experience. We love it so much that this year our party at PAX is going to be doing a giant Puzzle Break game with as many of you as can make it. And as we were talking about it, we just got really excited and decided we had to do an episode on it, so here we go. You know 999 and Zero Escape? We're all fans of those, which is how we got turned on to Puzzle Break in the first place. Because that's what it is. A live, in-person, group, escape-from-the-room experience. These escape-the-room things are starting to pop up in a lot of places, so some of you may already know what I'm talking about. You're put in a locked room with one hour to find a key to get yourselves out. Of course, the key isn't just hidden under a rug, it's secreted away behind a series of interlocking puzzles. Your group has to scramble about the room looking for pieces to these puzzles, trying to figure out how those pieces go together to form a larger puzzle, and then finally solve the brain teasers that emerge from putting all those pieces together in order to get a code or a combination that unlocks some other part of the room. Then, finally, after a lot of teamwork and a little bit of luck, you desperately fumble with the final lock as the timer ticks down to get out of the room and win. Of course, there's usually somebody in the room with you who will let you out if you don't solve all the puzzles in time, and they'll occasionally offer cryptic hints to nudge you in the right direction if you're getting totally off track. So the consequences for failure aren't quite as dire as in 999, but still, these are hard puzzles, expertly built. It'll take you every minute you have to get out of this room. A majority of the groups who take these rooms on don't finish in time. And that's what James and I wanted to talk about. Not about the design of the puzzles themselves, but about what makes the difference between winning and losing. The human endeavor that falls out of how these puzzles are built. Because something very interesting happens when you take Zero Escape and make it multiplayer. When instead of NPCs, you have real human beings, people you know filling all those roles. All of a sudden, the game moves from being one of raw logic to becoming a collaborative problem-solving puzzle. While part of the game is about the pure reasoning of figuring out the puzzles themselves, it's your team's ability to coordinate, cooperate, and communicate that'll make the difference between winning and losing in these events. Teamwork is so crucial for these rooms that, A, I'd rather go in with a coordinated team of average puzzle solvers than an uncoordinated group of puzzle-solving masters, and B, this is seriously the best team-building exercise ever. So let's talk about mechanics, and how the mechanics of the game roll out into the human dynamics. There are basically three parts to the Puzzle Break experience finding the clues, assembling the clues, and using those clues to solve the puzzles. The first great thing that rolls out is that by breaking the challenge down into these three categories, you make the game accessible to all sorts of different players. While a raw puzzle game may not appeal to those individuals who don't like working their way through brain teasers, by having a component where players have to search the environment and interact with the room, you create a role for explorer-type players who can now take on the tasks of ferreting out hidden locations and digging out the most obscure clues. And they can feel like a hero when they finally uncover that last piece the puzzle-solving team needed to make one of the puzzles all come together. At the same time, you also need people to coordinate, to know what everybody's currently working on, and to make sure that the right clues are all going to the right puzzle-solving teams, to make sure people aren't accidentally working on puzzles somebody else already solved, to always keep information flowing back and forth between all the groups. The importance of this role allows another totally disparate set of players to enjoy the game. Then, finally, you have the puzzle solvers. But even here, in Puzzle Break at least, the puzzle designers have gone out of their way to provide a number of different types of puzzles. From word puzzles, to logic puzzles, to math problems, to spatial challenges which require lateral leaps and perspective shifts. This not only allows everyone to highlight their talents, but actually rewards coming in with a diverse group of skills. But what I find most fascinating in doing this is observing your own team. Because it's hectic and because you're all on the clock, you learn a ton about how your team works. You learn where communication breaks down, what style of communication works with different members of the team, whether the people on your team have a realistic view of what they're good at. Do you have somebody who thinks they're really good at coordinating but actually isn't? It'll certainly come out here. You see which people work better in groups and which people work better alone. You learn about everyone's different mindsets, who's strong in logic, who can make wild lateral leaps. If you go into one of these escape the room experiences with people you work with, or even just a group of friends that spend a lot of time together, everything you learn inside one of these rooms translates to how you interact outside. And that's the incredible thing about this kind of experience. It's this beautiful window into how your team works together. And from a design perspective, what makes it so remarkable is that rather than getting hung up on what most people would probably consider the mainstay of the genre, pure puzzle solving, by breaking the challenge down into three component parts, they made it accessible to everyone, created a much broader scope of play, and set up interpersonal interactions that moved the game from being simply about a bunch of people solving puzzles together in a room to a true team effort to overcome one monumental interwoven task. 
If there's an Escape the Room experience to be found near you, I highly recommend giving it a try. And if you're in the Seattle area specifically, we're fans of Puzzle Break. Like I said earlier, we're gonna do a Puzzle Break event for our Extra Credits PAX party next week, so if you happen to be at PAX, I hope you'll join us. See you next time.